Mic check. Amen, amen. Welcome to the house of God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let us stand to our feet uh, this wonderful morning. Amen. We are going to worship God. We're going to praise God with this very first song. Can't stop praising His name. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Can't stop praising His name, can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Can't stop praising His name. I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow this morning. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every some confess and Jesus Christ is Lord forever. I can't stop praising this morning. I can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Can't stop praising this morning. I can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't Stop praising the name of Jesus. Can't stop praising His name. I can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. One more time. Can't stop praising His name. Can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising His name. Oh, I just can't stop praising the name of Jesus. Let's sing the next song. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. And yes, you are, Lord. Of the future. Yes, you are, Lord. You are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Of the nation. He is in control. Is and throne on righteousness. He is and throne on justice. His blood has overcome the enemies of battle. And he is our mighty deliverer. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Of the nation. One more time. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are, Lord. Of the nation. He is a throne this morning. He is a throne of righteousness. And drone on justice. His blood has overcome the enemy of our soul. And he is our mighty deliverer. Sing the next song. As the coming of the Lord draws near. I get ready to meet the king. He's coming in the clouds of heaven and he's coming back again with a shout he will descend in power and glory as the coming of the Lord draws near. Get ready to meet the king as he says, as the saints shout, Amen, Amen, as they meet him in the air, as the saints shout, Amen. Jesus Christ is coming back again. That's the coming of the Lord. That's the coming of the Lord. 
the Lord draws near and get ready to meet the King. He's coming in the clouds of heaven. He's coming back again. With a shout, He will descend in power and glory as the coming of the Lord draws near. Get ready to meet the peace as the saints, as the saints shout, Amen, Amen, as they meet Him in the air. As the saints shout, Amen, Amen, as Jesus Christ is coming back again. As the saints shout, as the saints shout, Amen, Amen, as they meet Him in the air. As the saints shout, Amen. Jesus Christ is coming back again. Let's worship Him and let's thank Him this morning. Yes, God, we praise and worship You, O oh God. We give You glory, O oh God. Yes, You are worthy, O oh God. Amen, amen. We're going to slow it down, amen, this morning. And we're going to worship Him with this next song. Oh, you never let go. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. Even when I'm calm in the middle of the storms of the sky, I won't turn back, I know you are near, and I will fear no. love is casting out fear and even when I'm caught in the middle of the storm of this life 
I won't burn back, I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with me And in my God is with me Whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Let's sing, oh no, hallelujah. Oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go. In every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Oh no, you never let go. Let's sing out loud, hallelujah. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high and every low. Oh no, you never let go, Lord. You never let go of me. Oh no, you never let go this morning, hallelujah. Oh. Never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go. Every high and every low. Oh, no, you never let go. Lord, you never let go of me. Let's give him a big clap offering. Hallelujah. Shikiyanda karaba ba 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 ba. Shiyalalara, let's worship our God this morning. Shikiyanda karaba shanda karaba shanda. Shikiyanda karaba shanda. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah, for your grace and your mercy and your love for us. This morning, as we stand before you, this morning, we bring our leaders before you, Pastor Great Mitchell, Pastor Joe Campbell, Pastor Alan Asir, bringing the Bible conference and of May 31st to 3rd of June, praying for this conference for all the delegates flying in uh, around all over the world. I pray God for journey mercy and blessing upon all of them. And even right now, we bring our nation before you in prayer. And we bring our Prime Minister, the King, before you. God grant them godly wisdom in running and ruling this nation of ours, Lord, so that the work of God will continue to grow. This morning, upholding our loved ones before you, our family members, who are not safe and we pray this morning for their soul we pray for their salvation God reach down deep into their hearts Lord pluck them out from from hell Lord God open the eyes of their heart Lord we pray Lord this morning even now we commit Lord God all those who are not here pray for journey mercy for my wife and Jasper and Sister Joanne, as they are over in, in Greece, O oh Lord, we pray for their safety. Bring them home safely, Lord. In the name of Jesus, bless their trip. And even for the renovation work to be completed in the new place, we pray that everything will uh, be done accordingly and, and everything will go smoothly. In the name of Jesus, we pray for souls that are lost, they are blinded by the God of this world. We pray that for the supernatural will be done, God Almighty, that you would begin to open the eyes of their heart, Lord. Salvation, we pray. God, save them, pluck them out from hell. Translate them to the kingdom of your dear Son this morning. And this morning in this place, Lord, we ask of you, to speak to all of us, Lord. Let your word begin to uh, be engrafted, begin to be sealed 
in, in all of us that we be found doers of your word this morning. Bless every one of us here in this place. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, musicians. And if you want to, you can go around and greet one another and welcome one another to the house of God. Anyway, we do welcome you here this morning for this uh, uh, Sunday morning meet, uh, worship service. Um, tonight we have service at 7, 6 o'clock prayer. Uh, Wednesday we have our meet, meet worship service at 7.30, 6.30 prayer. And uh, Wednesday, sorry, Friday night, we have our prayer meeting here at 7.30 as well. Amen. I'd like you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and uh, look to you, to God's word as uh, before we receive our uh, tithes and before we receive our offerings this morning. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 6, uh, Paul here begins to speak about sowing and reaping. Okay. This is a principle that if you were to, uh, you will see every day in life, okay, uh, a law of sowing and a law of reaping or a law of harvest. Okay? Every time you eat your vegetables, you eat your rice, okay? uh, you will see this principle at work. It does not just appear you know, magically before you. Okay? It happens because uh, there's a farmer somewhere in Perlis or in Cameron Highland that took the time to begin to sow. Okay? And that farmer, that planter, began to sow seeds into the ground. And um, for some, it takes six months. For some, it takes nine months. But after that period, there's a harvest. So, and uh, it is found in your dinner table. Okay, or in while you're having your lunch, you know the vegetables that you eat, the rice that you eat, or the fruit that you buy, is because there is this principle at work of sowing and reaping, or sowing, or harvesting, or Ecclesiastes chapter three put it as planting and plucking. So as you plant, there will be a day where you pluck. Okay, this morning one of the um, church sister says to me, Pastor, uh, um, I, uh, I didn't know you harvested your figs. Okay? And uh, it is, I changed my icon in the WhatsApp group okay, to that with a picture of myself holding the fruit of a fig. Okay? And um, it is um, red ripe. Okay? Um, this is one of the trees you should plant at home. Uh, every morning, it gives you an aroma. Okay? The tree is full of aroma. When you breathe in that thick, uh, flick, thick, uh, when you stand out there and when you take a deep breath, uh, it, it oozes aroma. It oozes a kind of very pleasant smell. So um, that that fix, okay, I harvested it, and it tastes uh, fantastic very good fruit to, to also eat as well and to plant in your home. But anyway, on, 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 in this world we're living, there is this principle at work, sowing and reaping, planting and harvesting. And here in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says to us that he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Okay? So it's not that you won't reap, you will always reap what you sow. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. 
So this law of sowing and harvest, again, is, is all over life. Uh, you see it every day. And uh, it is an ongoing thing, okay, whereby uh, there is harvesting done. But to harvest, it involves sowing. It involves planting. So if you do not plant, you do not harvest. Very simple. Okay? If you do not put the seed into the ground, you will not have anything six months later or three months later to harvest. But if there's a sowing, if there's a planting, there is in return one day a harvest will come back to you. Okay? It is guaranteed to work. Okay? This is a guaranteed thing. This is from God. It is guaranteed to work. But the amount of harvest is determined by the amount that you sow. Okay? Uh, I have one thick tree at home, small little one, one and a half inches tall. Sorry, one and a half feet tall, not one and a half inches tall, one and a half feet tall. Now it has like uh, eight fruits there. Okay? So if I want more, I need to plant another two, three fruits, two, three plants in order to have more fruits. Okay. So the amount of harvest is determined by the amount you sow. Scripture here says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So your harvest is determined by uh, how much you sow. Okay, in a church setting, uh, there is the seed of tithing. There is also the seed of offering. There is the seed of giving and participating. So every time you begin to enlarge your sowing, not just in the area of tithing. Tithing is 10% of uh, your income. You uh, give it to God, you pay it to God. But the Bible also speaks in Malachi chapter 3 of offerings as well. Offering can come in the form of uh, giving or participating uh, in, uh, in, in the things that concern uh, the expenses in the kingdom of God. So this uh, morning, okay, as you uh, plant, as you sow okay, in the area of also offering, uh, what's going to happen is uh, you yourself will also uh, rip okay, more uh, for yourself, not just in the area of tithe, but also in the area of other offerings as well. Now, behind the church there, there's an envelope called Church Loan Repayment Fund. And uh, we have started repaying the loan for the new place, though we have not shifted in yet. But uh, this month will be the third month that we have started repaying the loan. And I'm going to open up to you all to participate in this. Okay? To participate in this very area of uh, repaying the monthly loan for this uh, new place that God has blessed us with. And if you read in verse 7, So let each one give as he purpose in his heart. Not grudgingly, okay, or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So if you are going to participate in it, participate with a cheerfulness in it. Uh, don't feel pressured by it, but give cheerfully. And if you do so, uh, God sees your heart. And the Bible says in verse 6 that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Also, having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance of every good work, which means simply a uh, God will see that your needs are all taken care of okay, at the end of the day. So this morning, let us come before God, understanding that this is a principle okay, involve all of life in order for one to have a harvest. If you want to have a harvest, put this into practice, sow, plant, and you will have for yourself 
a day whereby you will pluck or harvest what you have planted. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning. Let's go before God. Let's bow our heads, amen. And Father, we ask your blessing as we put your word into practice in the area of sowing, planting. We believe your word to be true and this is shown all over. Whereby, where there's a sowing, there's a harvesting. As your people here take the step of faith to begin to sow into the things of God, I ask you to cause them to reap of what they plant. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. If you have a Bible, we're going to turn to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and verse 2. Luke 9, verse 1 and verse 2. You stand to your feet. We're going to read these two verses. And then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. You read verse 2. Uh, Father, we ask your blessing upon this message this morning. In Jesus Christ's name, and uh, everyone says, Amen. You can be seated. This morning message came out from a number of incidents that took place the last uh, few weeks. And one of them has to do with a WhatsApp photograph uh, someone sent to me uh, uh, a few days ago. Uh, this photograph that this person sent to me is a very serene or peaceful picture of her home. Okay. It's a picture of a family and it's a picture of order and peace. Okay. And 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 which is supposed to be what it should be in a home, okay, in a family, whereby it's a picture of peace, it's a picture of home or family, it's a picture of order. But um, it was not so a day earlier or it was not so even many days earlier in this home. A day earlier or uh, weeks earlier, in that home, it was a picture of, uh, you could say, war. It's a picture of unrest. It's a picture of disorder. And, but uh, that picture that was sent to me by that person on a few days ago uh, was a picture of happiness, a picture of peace and order. And what happened was that um, a few days earlier, I began to counsel the person uh, concerning what to do in a home situation that is out of control or not in order. And I begin to speak to that person about the subject of power and authority. And that is, uh, she has the power, she has the authority in the spiritual realm to take authority, to exercise her authority in that home 
and to begin to order that home, take authority in that home to be what she wants that home to be, that is to be a home that is of peace and order. And that sister began to uh, uh, say to me, okay, pastor, I will begin to exercise uh, what you tell me to do about power and authority. And uh, she says that she's going to report it to me and tell me what happened. And true enough, uh, the next day, she sent me a picture of the home, okay, which was uh, a home, a picture of peace, and a picture of order. I spoke to her that Jesus has given to us as Christians power and authority. When we receive the Holy Spirit, very clearly, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and you shall receive power. We receive power. Okay, and we receive power over the atmosphere, over the condition, and true to it, she says she will put it into practice. And the next day, she sent me a picture of her home, a picture of order, and a picture of peace. So this morning, I would like to speak to you on this uh, very needed subject okay, of power and authority. And as we read the words by Jesus, Jesus mentioned two important words and the words there other than the word power and authority is the word over all. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority highlight, circle the word over all. Over all. All. Okay. This Disciples have power and authority, not just only over one or two, but over all, and goes on to say, devils and to cure diseases this morning. The rightful order for us as Christians is we are not under all, but the rightful position that for a Christian, we are over all. We are on top of things. This is what God wants us to, to be, in that position to be on top of things, not underneath of things, which means we are to be in control over things and not under control by the invisible or by the visible, but we be in or on top or in control of things, not the other way around, not the situation as this family. The situation is in control of everything that is happening to her, not she is in control of the things that are happening, in which this overall is mentioned by the book of Genesis or Moses from the very beginning in the book of Genesis 1, uh, during the creation and from the very beginning this is the way God has purposed it to be for God's people listen to what Genesis 1 says in verse 26 to 28 and I want you to just count how many times the word over is mentioned over every, over all, over the then God say let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over the cattle over all the earth of time over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth fifth time so god created man in his own image in the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. God says to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, 
subdue it, take control of it, have dominion. Okay. Listen to this all these words. Have dominion over the fish of this the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Seven or eight times. The word mentioned over all over every Jesus says to the disciples, I give you power and authority over all, over every. Seven or eight times the word over is used. Man made in the image of God, the image of Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He's made with this over all, over every and not the other way around, in which here, this creation of man who is made in this image and likeness, this morning, this purpose have never changed. Okay, in Genesis, it is said to you and I, in Luke chapter 9, Jesus again spoke of it this morning. When he called to the disciples to himself, he gave them power and authority over all. Deuteronomy 28 verse 13, And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. Christ's followers are to be on top of things, not beneath. Now what that means is, if we are not on top of things, if you are not on top of things, and things are on top of you and in control of you, instead of you being in control of it, somewhere, for whatever reason, maybe through ignorance, maybe you do not know, or, or through a lie, you have been lied to, a lie that you have come to believe, or for whatever reason, you have failed or we have failed to activate or we have failed to switch on the power and exercise the authority that has been given to us. And for that reason, we have become the tail. And we have not become the head. And we have become beneath because of that. For whatever reason, uh, this morning as you sit here, maybe it's ignorance, Maybe, you know, you have believed in a lie. You see, when we got the keys to the church, to the new place, the first thing we did was to get hold of the contractor, to get hold of uh, the people who are involved, the air-conditioned men, to come and have a look at that place so that we would know how to go about. Uh, they would know what to do and we know, you know, how to go about it. But when we were in the place, uh, we realized that there was no light. Okay, no, uh, we couldn't on the light and um, we could not really see properly um, certain places, certain dark places, the toilet area and all that. Now, until I think Jasper began to text and say, Dad, did you on the main switch? Did you try to on the main switch? Okay. So we tried to on all this switch here, but we didn't on the main switch. And then I think I told Brother Liu about it, I think. And um, true enough, the next day, uh, he on the main switch, and voila, the lights came out. The lights was there. We could see the place. We could do things. The contractor could come and break down the walls, you know, and begin to do things, begin to start work. The power was there, but we didn't switch on the main switch. You get what I'm saying? The power was there, but we didn't switch turn on the main switch. We were ignorant of the main switch. But as soon as we turned on the main switch, the power was ready, the power was there, it was ready to break things, it was ready to light up things, it was ready for you to do something. But we did not own it 
for one reason, for, for one reason, we were ignorant of that main switch. But as soon as we on it, the power was restored and we could start, begin to go about doing things. And could it be this morning, the reason why there is no order, there is confusion, there is no peace, no victory, no breakthrough, is because we are not on top of things. And could it be why we are not in control of things? Is because we did not use the power and authority that has been given to you from the very beginning of Genesis chapter 1. When God made you in His image and likeness, from the very day, day one, when He made you, he has given you that power and authority. And could it be is because we have not switched on? Christianity, someone say, is a religion of power. Though we know it's not a religion, Christianity is a relationship between us and God. But if it's a religion, it's a religion of power. And may I add to it also a religion of authority. It is a conquering belief. It is an overcoming belief. Book of Joshua, which Joshua is a type of Jesus. And you find that Joshua, when he go into the promised land, when he was in the promised land, he is a conquering leader. He is a conquering man of God. Conquering over 32 enemies. Wherever he go, he conquer them. Okay. And so is Moses. So is David. So is Jesus. This morning, whereby he conquered death. In Mark chapter 16, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Not demons will cast them out. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. In my name, they will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. It is said of our Lord Jesus Christ in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the power, with the Holy Spirit, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God with him. Okay. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Jesus was anointed with power. With that power, he went about okay, conquering, overcoming, healing. Mark 5, 25 to 34, which is about a woman with an issue of blood who touched the cloth of Jesus. Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? And he went on to say, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue, the word virtue is power, power have gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? Jesus realized power have flowed out from him. Jesus, the Son of of God, the Son of Man, fully 100% man, but he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in him. The virtue is in him. With that virtue, with that power that he had, he went about lighting up. He went about taking control over all. He went about being on top of things. And not the other way around. In First Corinthians chapter two, three to verse five, and my speech and my preaching, Paul says, 
was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Okay. Paul says that, you know what, my preaching is not just with words, and not just man's wisdom, or man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. In Acts chapter 3, here is Peter and here is John at the gate of beautiful. And this man who is a beggar, born a beggar, uh, this morning is asking for, for money. And the Bible says that Peter began to say to this man who is paralyzed, silver and gold I do not have. I don't have these things that you want, but I have something. Okay? What I do have, I give to you. Okay? And what he has is the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. What Peter had was he had that which was given to him by Jesus. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit to bring change to this man's life. To change him from one of one who is uh, of a handicap to a man that is normal. He says, I don't have money, I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but I have this. I have the power that has been given unto me. And this power can electrify you. This power can begin to put strength upon your legs. This power can begin to put hope upon you. This power begin to change you from one of sadness to gladness, from darkness to brightness. Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1 verse 3, called his power and authority a spiritual blessing given to all of us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. In Christ, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And two of them is called power and authority. Three places are called heaven. And that is heaven as is in where God is heaven as is in the second heaven the atmosphere the spiritual world as a heaven as is on earth and in this heavenly places in Christ the Father and the Son has given us or blesses us with every spiritual blessing needed to help us to be on top of things this morning are you on top of things is your home in control okay is your finances is your work is in control this morning because this is what God wants of us to have and one of this spiritual blessing or two of them come in the form of power and authority which is already been given to you and I this morning when you receive the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, receive the Holy Spirit in your life and you receive power. And what we are to do, what are we to do this morning and what we are to do this morning is to switch on. Like what I told you, the example in the new place. There's power in that place. Okay? To generate uh, the, the tools needed to break the walls, to light up that place, but we didn't know it. And we didn't switch it on. But when we switch it on, it began to light up that place. And what we are to do is to switch it on. Now, don't get me wrong here. Uh, we are supposed to call to Jesus if we need help. Okay, But there are situations here that the power button is with you. The situation is that God has given you that power and authority to begin to change that situation. 
You know, the on button is already with you. And all you need to do is to turn it on. Turn it on. How do we turn it on? Is by first. You simply have to believe you have it in you already. It's in you. From the very start, when God says in Genesis 1, when He made us, He made us to be over all. He made us to be dominion over every, from the very, from the very beginning. Which means to be filled with power and authority over all. Somewhere along the line, we lost it in Genesis 3. When men sinned against God by disobeying Him. But Jesus regained it back for you and I. And He has restored it back to us by giving it to us through the Holy Spirit. It is a well-known scripture found in Acts 3.6 when the lame man looked at Peter. And look at John. And this lame man was expecting to receive something from them. Peter says these words to this man. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you. Peter understands something about power and authority. He has it okay, inside him. You have it inside you. You as well. Okay. If you receive the Spirit of God... If you have confessed your sin, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God lives in you. You have it within you. Peter had received from Jesus the power to make a difference for this man's life through the name of Jesus. But such as I have, or what I do have, I give to you. This is what I have. And I give it to you. He believed he had it. He knows he has it. And he used it. He switched it on for this man's sake. Rise up and walk. And he commanded this man to rise up and walk. And true enough, this man rose up and walked. Mark 16, 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. What qualifies us to become a Christian of power over all is when we believe, we simply believe. Okay? X1 it says, when X1 says you receive power in the Holy Ghost, you simply believe it. You simply believe X uh, Genesis chapter 126. That when God made you, He made you to be powerful. He made you and He has given you authority over all. No doubts, no question asked. You simply believe it. And when you believe it, you exercise it. You take action. Okay. I think Brother Lee went and turned on the switch. The switch was down, the main switch. Exercise it, turn it on, and when it's turned on, it came back. It, it lightened up the place. And to exercise it and to do it with authority. By that it means you put into action by taking command, by taking charge over. If your office environment is full of, full of quarrels, if your, if your home situation is full of unrest, take control, take charge, take command. Jesus says to Peter in Matthew 16, 18 to 19, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in the heavens. And whatsoever, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose 
in the heaven. I'm going to give you a set of keys, Peter. And with this set of keys of Peter, if you use it, if you just if you don't use it, it's not, not going to work. But if you use it, we all have set of keys, car keys, house keys, you know. And 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 if you go into your car without uh, 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 without using the keys, you will not start the engine. You will not get the car moving until you take it out, put it into it, turn it on. Then it starts to work. I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Peter. Whatever you bind on this earth, whatever you lose on this earth, it will be loose in the spiritual world. It will be bound in the spiritual world. We all have keys, but it is worthless until we use the key. So a man uh, taking charge of the out of control traffic situation. Okay, lights are all down. Uh, the green light, yellow light, red light is not working and the traffic is all in chaos. And this man got down from the car and he began to take control of the situation. You stop, okay, you go. Okay, then you stop, okay, you go. And then you stop, you go, and then uh, the traffic begin to move again. You got to take control of your home situation. Yes, you may pray, and it's not wrong to pray. Jesus, help God, help me. But God said, I've given you the keys. The power is in you. Take command, take authority. Command is to take charge. And Jesus says, remember the words he says when he called the disciples in Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together, gave them power and authority. He knows that without power and authority, they will not be able to subdue. They were not able to take charge. They will not be able to take control. They will not be able to, you know, uh, uh, get things going, get things moving, if without power and authority. Remember what Genesis chapter 1 says to you and I by God when he made you in his image and likeness and uh, whereby he says, I read to you again in Genesis chapter 1, those, uh, that word found there, in Genesis 1, uh, verse 26, Let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping things that creep on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, be uh, multiply and fill the earth. Subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living things that move on the earth. We'll close with Psalms chapter 8, if you could turn there. Verse 1 to verse 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalms chapter 8, verse 1 to 8. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the fall and the avenger. Verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings, that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels. You crown them with glory and honor. Look at what verse 6 says. Highlight that. You make them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Amen. You make them lower than the angels. 
but you crown them with glory and honor. And then he went on to say, verse 6, you make them rulers over the works of your hands. Put everything under their feet. To be able to do that, it means that God has given them power and authority to do that. Okay, to put everything under their feet. Christianity is a belief of power and authority. But you have to switch it on yourself. You got to take authority. You got to use that power. It's just like the very beginning. I told this sister, okay, we have, we have prayed, we have do this. You do this. Okay, I know your home is all in chaos and things are confusing. What to do, pastor? There was the question that was asked. What to do? I say, God has given you power. Take charge of the home. Okay, pray and take charge. Say, in the name of Jesus. Peter says to that man, I don't have anything, but I have this. And in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus, take control over your home in your prayer. Say, in Jesus' name, I take control. I take authority over my work, over my home, over my office, over the atmosphere. In Jesus' name, I bind. In Jesus' name, I lose. In Jesus' name, I cast out every spirit of, uh, of argument or rebellion. I cast out. I bind the spirit of confusion. Take control of the things by commanding in G because power is switch it on. Okay. If you switch it on by using it, many times you go to go, oh God, we go on a pity, but oh God, how uh, God, uh, God, this, what are you to do? God, this is, God say, I already given you. The power is with you. Use it. If you use it, okay. It will work because you and I, when God made you, He has given you this power, this dominion, this authority to begin to change the situation for your good. Amen. I want every head bow. Again this morning, maybe we didn't know about this, but now you know. And if you know, then use it. Okay. Take charge, take command over the atmosphere in your home, in your office, in your school. Use the keys. And Father in heaven, God the Son, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. That you and you form us out from dust. You put into us power and authority. And Father, this morning as we begin to know who we are, what we have, we have the keys to open, the keys to lock. And Father in heaven, as we use it, teach us to use these keys. Teach us to command, teach us to use words. Words are very powerful. And as we use it, Father, we thank you that the environment, the atmosphere will change for good. And we thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say, 
Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Okay, God bless all of you and go in the joy of the Lord. Amen.